Alright guys, welcome to the next episode of Final Fantasy XI Online from Happy Beard Games. My name's Kevin, and we're gonna start this right away. I know the last episode was a little long-winded and a little weird because I really wanted to emphasize that I want to do requests, and also I want to emphasize that I want to do specific topics and not just a let's play. So in this video, we're gonna jump right in and we're gonna do... My topic today is how to become a summoner, how to get the summoner job. Like I mentioned last time, I want to do a few videos about how to get the job classes in Final Fantasy XI. Now, a job is basically like your class, Your uh, you have different classes that you can be. You can also cross-class, so you have a job and you have a secondary job. So for me, right now I'm a Dark Knight and a Red Mage, I think. And um, for now, we're going to try to become a summoner. We're going to try to unlock this job because you start out with the main six from the NES Final Fantasy, and then you have to unlock the rest. And they've added more and more through different expansions. So we're going to focus on getting a summoner job. Now I do want to mention right at the start that I'm using a guide. And that guide is from BG Wiki. And I'm going to post the link to that direct page in the description below. So that way you can either follow along with it. Or you can check up on it if I missed anything. And uh, scold me for that. But yeah, I do have the link to that in the description below. So without any further ado, let's start this episode of Final Fantasy XI Online on Happy Weird Games, and we're going to find out how to become a summoner and go through every step of it that I can show you. Alright guys, let's start. The actual quest name for the quest to get the summoner job is called I Can Hear a Rainbow, and it's from the Windurst area. Now it doesn't say this on the website, but when I played it in-game, it actually said that you had to be level 30 to accept this quest, so keep in mind that you have to be at least level 30 on a previously obtained job. To start this quest, what you have to do is obtain a Carbuncle's Ruby from a Leech Mob. The Leeches are a monster type in Final Fantasy XI, and you can get the Carbuncle's Ruby from, apparently, three different types of Leeches. One of them is the Thread Leeches in Valkrim Dunes. The other one is the Poison Leeches in Baburimu Peninsula. And those are probably the easiest ones to get, according to the website. Also, those leeches are lower level than the Bloodsucker leeches in Torai Mirai Canal. And that place, you'll have to go at a higher level. So, you can go to any of those three locations. And for me, I can't really show you what I did because I did it a long time ago. Even the website suggests that you may have gotten it while doing something else. Because it has a low drop rate for Carmichael's Rupee. I put that in my bank in my mog house so i had that saved away for a long time i didn't even know it was for this quest but then i checked it and it sounded sort of familiar so then i grabbed it out of my storage and put it into my inventory now either way you get that you have to have that carbuncle's ruby to start this quest so then once you've got the carbuncle's ruby according to the website and according to the way the quest goes you have to go to windurst walls area g-3 on the map once you go to Winder's Walls, there's a place called the House of the Hero. All you have to do is go up to the door, click on it, and it'll give you a cutscene. Cardian will tell you to experience seven types of weather in outdoor areas. It's a little vague, but the website makes it a lot clearer, and I'll show it even clearer directly in gameplay. So what you have to do is go to different areas of the game, and these specific maps will have specific types of weather effects that can pertain to that map. If you check the bottom left corner of your game screen, near where the compass is, just above that, there will be a weather effect status. This indicator can be red for fire, it can be yellow, which is like a dusty, dry weather, it can be green, which just means it's really windy, 
It can be uh, light blue, which means it's icy, snowy. There's also blue, which is rain. And there's also purple, which is thunder and lightning. You even see elementals that pertain to these weather effects in those areas when they're happening. And then there's also orange, which is clear weather. So what you're trying to do is complete a rainbow. Now keep in mind, if you go to Lafine Plateau at any point, there's not always a wind effect for the weather. It's not always there. In fact, also in Lafine, you can also get rain. So what you're trying to do in this quest is complete a rainbow of colors. So you get the red from the fire area, and the yellow from the dry area, green from the windy area, light blue from the icy snow, blue from the rain, and purple from the thunder and lightning. And you also get orange from any outdoor area when it's clear weather. And when it's clear weather, there won't be an indicator next to the compass, by the way. So there's a couple things you gotta look for on this quest. If the weather changes when you're already in that area or zone, so for say I'm already in Lafine Plateau and I'm just waiting for it to rain, waiting for it to rain, and then it finally comes on, it doesn't activate the cutscene. What it does is it, you have to go out of the area and then go back in, so it'll load. It basically loads the cutscene as you walk into the area, and then the cutscene will play directly as soon as you go in there, which can make timing it a little tricky. But what I did was I waited near the exit of a zone. So I waited and waited, and then when it finally changed and transitioned to a new weather effect, I would leave and then go back in, and that's how I got some of the colors for this rainbow. Now when you first start the quest, you probably just want to get the orange one, which is any outdoor area with no weather effect, a clear weather. So I just went outside Winders and activated the first cutscene, which is the easiest one to get. Now according to the website, red is the hardest color of the rainbow to get because red is rarest. It's the weather effect that happens the least. The other ones all have common and very common weather effects. Um, some of them are really, really easy to get, like the ice one, that, that was really easy to get. Just go to an icy, snowy area. So red is the hardest one to get usually, but for me it was actually the second to last to get. And I had to wait an extra half an hour at least before I got the last one. Now, the reason I got red so easily was because I was teleporting to places that I had already been to throughout my journeys on Final Fantasy XI. So, I had these books and I can transport between each book and I could teleport to different zones through that and that made this quest a lot easier. So to get the red, I just teleported to Valkyrie Dunes and in Valkyrie Dunes, I got the red effect and that seemed to be the easiest place to get that one for me. Another thing that really helps in this quest, besides teleportation, is having the mount system. So the mount system really helped me out a lot. It helped me travel much faster than I normally would have on foot, and it just made this a lot easier. It actually took me about two hours to get the seven types of weather effects. Now this may be different for you, depending on which places you can teleport to or if you have a mount available, because that does make it much easier. But it's not impossible to do that without that, and it does help if you're a higher level as well because that way you won't have to worry about running into monsters that could attack you and other things that might get in the way. Now you might think it was kind of boring waiting for some of these, and it kind of was. I was trying to find the right spot, so I was teleporting back and forth, trying to find the rain and trying to find the thunder and lightning effect, and I just couldn't find it for a while. The thunder and lightning took me forever, but uh, I did find my way to pass the time. I went to an area where it was common, which was Peshaw Marshlands, so actually it's very common there. And I waited and it just kept coming, the, the rain effect, like two or three times in a row, the rain effect would go on and on and on. So I just played around during that time, waiting out and killing enemies, even though they were much too low level for me to get experience points and I could kill most of them with one or two hits. So I just had that in the meantime to do while I waited for the thunder and lightning effect to appear in Peshaw Marshlands. And it was the last one that I did. Some of them were pretty easy to find, like the yellow dust, the green wind, it was just like right there, like as soon as I got there. And um, yeah, there wasn't that hard. So once you get the final piece of the rainbow, you will see a special extended version of the cutscene that you've seen throughout the other colors, and it will show right after that, Carbuncle in the sky. Carbuncle will say, come Ellswood, follow me. Carbuncle vanished off in the direction of Lothine Plateau, so then you know where to go next, which is Lothine Plateau. So I went directly there right after this. So after teleporting to Lothine Plateau, I was near the exit to Jugner Forest. So then I knew I had to go to Lothine Plateau area G-6 on the map, and then I would trade Carbuncle's ruby to the question mark 
for a cutscene to complete this quest. So I got on my trusty tiger mount and I headed towards G6 area of Lothian Plateau. Now it took a little while but there's an area where you start to see these stone pillars and once you make it through a few of those you'll find like sort of a area where there's more stone pillars and in the middle of that area there is a question mark marking on the ground. So you click on that, it will tell you your carbuncle's ruby shines brightly, a voice echoes, come, raise it higher. And then you trade the item, carbuncle's ruby, to that question mark. Now before you complete this quest, it would be a good idea to go to your Records of Eminence quests on the menu and set up so you're doing the summoner quest. You'll get an extra 300 experience points for your job as well as 300 sparks that you can use as a currency. Now the cutscene will play, and you'll see Carbuncle up there in the sky of Lathin Plateau. He'll come down to you and say, Thank you, Ellswood. My name is Carbuncle. I am one of several new forces here in Vanadil. I became a crystal, was divided into shards, and fell into the hands of beasts and people alike as the world changed around me. And then I knew, I knew that you needed me. That's why I'll lend you a little of my power. I'll fight by your side and watch over you always. I demand you perform a labor, visit the ancient beings that sleep in faraway lands and places of legend. Vanadil is the world in which you live. You should see the true Vanadil with your own eyes. I will extend a bridge, a bridge between the people of the present and beings of ages past. And he flies up into the sky and makes a rainbow. Oh, it's all so magical. So now you can become a summoner. You can also summon Carbuncle as your first summoner pet. So then what I did was I traveled all the way to Sandoria. I don't know why I chose Sandoria instead of Winders, because that's not my home nation Winders is. But I decided to go to Sandoria because I really like that area a lot. And I went to the Mog House to change my job. So I changed my job to Summoner, of course, and I put my sub job as a Red Mage for now. After changing my job to Summoner, I went directly out to the field to check it out. Now I want to point out to you guys that Summoner is a job that I've always seen I've heard about, I know about it from other Final Fantasy games, but I don't know much about it in this game, so there's still more to discover. But for me as a player, especially in the past, back in maybe 2004 or 3 when I was about 14 years old, and I played this game with my friends, we had seen the summoner job, but we didn't know much about it, and none of my friends actually had that job or really wanted to be a summoner. Um, we were more focused on the Dark Knight and the Black Mage, stuff like that. Yeah, Summoner always looked really cool to me because I always saw these people playing and they had Carmichael follow them around like a pet. This was back when, um, you know, Pokemon was still fresh in our minds and this was really cool to have a pet in an MMO that would not only follow you around, but you could command him and it would, you know, battle for you and all that. It's really cool. So I got to check it out for the first time here. I never actually got to play with it until today. So... This is me checking out Carbuncle. So what you do is you go to Abilities, and then you summon Carbuncle, of course, you're a summoner, and he'll follow you around, and not only that, you can actually command him. So there's a few different things you can command Carbuncle to do. You can do Assault, which means it'll attack your target. You can do Retreat, which means it'll hold back on your attacking of the target. You can release the summon to uh, basically send it away. And then you can do a special abilities with it, like Blood Pact Rage and Blood Pact Ward. Um, I didn't have Rage yet available at the level I'm at. Maybe I have to buy a scroll, or maybe I have to unlock it by leveling up. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll find that out later. If you use the, if you use the ability Pet Command, you can actually have Carbuncle heal you as well. Now, one thing that I want to point out is Carbuncle actually has its own HP bar, so you have to look out for Carbuncle's health as well. It's sort of like having a trust, I think, except you can actually command it to do things. Another thing with the summoner job is you can attack while the summon is attacking as well. It's not just the summon. So you're both attacking the monster, which is double the damage, uh, double the attack. And also, the summon can draw some of that aggro from the monster that would be attacking you, it'll attack the summon. In addition, I had a few white mage spells that I could use, so I cast Dia on it at one point. I'm not sure if that's a summoner ability, or if it's just because I'm using a red mage as my sub job. So yeah, that's about it for getting the summoner job in Final Fantasy XI. It's a lot easier now that you have teleport, 
and the mount system. It makes it go by a lot faster. Remember, also remember that you have to be at least level 30 to start this quest. In addition, you have to have the Carbuncle's Ruby item from a leech to start this quest as well. And I think I've shown this quest fully from start to finish, pretty much. So yeah, I look forward to playing around with the summoner job a lot more. I don't know if I'll make it my main focus, but I'll probably play with it quite a bit, just because it's really interesting to me, and I really like the carbuncle that follows you around. But yeah, that's about it, guys, for this episode of Happy Weird Games playing Final Fantasy XI. If you have any requests for something that you'd like me to tackle in Final Fantasy XI in a future episode, let me know that in the comments below. Anything that I missed on this episode that you'd like me to show more next time, or show a little bit more in depth if I do something different next time, things like that help out a lot. But I think I covered it to the best extent that I could. Alright guys, thanks for watching Happy Beard Games. Until next time, Happy Beard Games, we'll see you then. Happy Beard Games, out. out.